Antipsychotics are used to treat psychotic disorders such as schizophrenia. The symptoms in schizophrenia is thought to be due to altered dopaminergic activity in the dopamine pathways of the brain. But how do the dopamine pathways work in schizophrenia and how do antipsychotics target these pathways? Let's start with the pathophysiology of schizophrenia. So there are four dopamine pathways in the brain. These are pathways rich in neurons that produce dopamine. Here are the four pathways. Let's start with the mesolimbic pathway. The mesolimbic pathway goes from the midbrain to the limbic system. And it's thought that overactivity in this pathway leads to the positive symptoms seen in schizophrenia, such as delusions and auditory hallucinations. The mesocortical pathway goes from the midbrain to the prefrontal cortex inside the frontal lobe. And it's thought that in schizophrenia, underactivity in this pathway leads to the negative symptoms and the cognitive symptoms, such as flat affect, social withdrawal, and inattention. The nigrostriatal pathway goes from the substantia niagara to the striatum. The striatum is part of the basal ganglia, and this pathway is responsible for the control of movement through the extrapyramidal pathways. So these are pathways mediated by the basal ganglia. Now finally, the tubero-infundibular pathway goes from the hypothalamus to the anterior pituitary gland. This pathway is responsible for the production of prolactin. It's important to realize that dopamine and prolactin have an inverse relationship in this pathway. So increased dopamine in the tubero-infundibular pathway leads to less prolactin being produced, and less dopamine in the tubero-infundibular pathway leads to more prolactin being produced. Let's now discuss the effects of typical antipsychotics on these dopamine pathways and their implications in schizophrenia. Typical antipsychotics are D2 receptor antagonists, which means that they will reduce dopamine levels. Typical antipsychotics will reduce dopamine levels in all four dopamine pathways. Let's start with the effects of reducing dopamine levels in the mesolimbic pathway. Remember we said that overactivity in the mesolimbic pathway led to the positive symptoms in schizophrenia. So typical antipsychotics will reduce the dopamine activity in the mesolimbic pathway and hence improve the positive symptoms in schizophrenia. Now for the mesocortical pathway, remember we said that underactivity in this pathway led to the negative and cognitive symptoms seen in schizophrenia. So typical antipsychotics will reduce dopamine levels in this pathway, but as the negative and cognitive symptoms were already due to underactivity in this pathway, typical antipsychotics will not improve the negative or cognitive symptoms in schizophrenia usually. Now the nigrostriatal pathway, when typical antipsychotics reduce dopamine levels in this pathway, this can lead to extrapyramidal side effects. These side effects include acute dystonia, akathisia, Parkinsonism, and tardive dyskinesia. These side effects can happen because when you reduce dopamine activity in this pathway, there will be an increase in cholinergic activity in this pathway, and this can contribute to the extrapyramidal side effects. Now finally, the tubero-infundibular pathway. Typical antipsychotics will reduce dopamine activity in this pathway, and remember we said that dopamine and prolactin had an inverse relationship. So reducing dopamine in this pathway will lead to high levels of prolactin in the patient. And this can lead to side effects such as galactorrhea, amenorrhea in females, and gynecomastia in males.